Hey guys, Mike here. So definitely an interesting day in the market. And I tell you, I think everybody thought with the news that came out of China about the chips with AMD and Intel, which we'll get into in a second, was really going to make a shift down, right? Which we thought in pre-market, I'm sure that's what was happening when they were dropping down 3%. We we're like, oh man, here we go. Finally going to get some weakness in chip stocks, which will of course drag a lot of other things down as well. But of course, Hmm, what a 180. And when you look at this, here's the news I'm talking about. China blocks use of Intel and AMD chips in government computers. And in fairness, the reason why most people thought this, including myself, is because when Apple got similar news, China bans iPhone uses for government officials at work, look what happened to Apple. Ends up dropping around 5% in two days. And then when you look as this thing just kept going down, ends up around 9% in 12 days, and then it just kind of kept going down from there. But, you know, so we expect something or expected something similar, right? But AMD was like, eh, I don't think so, at least not today. And so it started off 3%, completely almost recovered, went green for a while, uh, then went back slightly red. But one thing to look at AMD on, if you're an AMD trader or an investor or whatever, when you want to know when to buy, look at the year-to-date anchor VWAP, right? This is coming from the first day of the year, where it's setting just below it right now, but you see multiple bounces, right? So we'll take this one off and we'll, I'm gonna put it back up in a minute, but this is 2023's year to day anchor v -WAP. You see how many times it bounces and when it gets right below it, it just absolutely launches, right? And so again, and you can see it absolutely just went parabolic there, but when you pull up 2022, even in a downtrend, you see something very similar, here, right? That's the first day of 2022 right there. And you can see it's the opposite though, right? It acts as a barrier, right? As resistance. And so even when it gets slightly above it, it ends up selling down all the way down here. So whether you're in an uptrend, downtrend, and all stocks do not do this, but AMD is just one of those ones. And also if you pull up uh, the MACD, which we'll do that, we're going to get rid of these. But if you happen to be an AMD investor and you're like, wow, when should I dollar cost average in? Maybe that's the way to do it, right? Your day anchored VWAP. Now, you see the MACD, again, is, is trying to seem like it wants to turn bullish, but on the short-term time frame, it's still below zero. And so bears really are kind of in charge right here. Here's the 30-minute where it got over it and then sold back down right there. That trend line was resistance today. The one that was above, bouncing, bouncing, ends up resistance until it gets back above it. And you can see right there's your weekly expected moves, which aren't bad. I mean, 170, 79 is the, to the downside around 188.52 to the upside so it's really kind of stuck somewhere in the middle now was this the only one that did this absolutely not hey guys before we continue please hit that like button it really helps people find the video and think about subscribing if you like a finance channel who does not try to talk over your head here's nvidia which of course i thought for sure i don't know about you let me know in the comments they were driving this to a thousand today right i mean huge green candle got it up to 967 right and when you look at this and again this is the five day right here it's just below uh, that right there. This is the hour. We don't worry about that. But you can see as long as we get below this level right here, right, as we've been doing what? We've been stair-stepping up. You can see it plain as day starting around around the 19th right there. And so it just keeps stair-stepping its way up where it does a big move in the morning, kind of sells off in the afternoon, right? And, of course, leaving behind support, coming down to the prior days and level usually, and bouncing, Okay. And so, again, is this going to end up eclipsing the previous all-time high around that 980 mark to finally get us to 1,000? You can see the weekly expected move on this one right here. Again, stuck basically right in the middle. And so, you know, you look at SMCI was the same way. Big move up, big recovery on this one, still going up. It's kind of almost starting its own stair stepping as it sets between like a, a bullish order block and then it's sitting there with this inverse fair value gap which could actually support to push it back up right there and try to push through the bearish order block we'll have to see on that one and you know but again this is another one that's really in this huge range of like 850 to 1150 and it's kind of just going up and down and sideways and here we go and so traders pretty much own this one as you can see and so we'll see if we end up having this as support to move up to the very next level that's really going to be the big thing let me know in the comments what you think about this one but i just know traders they come in out of this one at certain levels and they get you know a hundred dollar per share two hundred dollar per share here and then they'll sell down wait for it or they'll short it and things like that now when you look of course this helped with the s p today not to go down as much as it should because a lot of the stocks were red but you know it came down setting on that five day moving average right there into the fair value gaps you can see right there you can see your weekly expected moves right there 
And so we're basically closer to the lower level than not. Remember, when I say these weekly expected moves, 68 to 72% of the time, you're going to end up the week inside this move right here. So if you see yourself getting below one or the other, usually you'll get a bounce back in the other direction. So just FYI, this is the option market that comes up with this one. Now, IWM right here, what do we want to do? We want to come back down, test that 2023 high. Where do we end the day? Bouncing off the 2023 high, All right? So got a retest of that right there, still above the five day moving average, basically closer to the higher end of the weekly expected move, which by the way is only four days. I didn't mention that in Sunday's video. Thank you for some of the comments, uh, making sure I do that. So it's only four days. So Friday we're closed for a good Friday because it is Easter weekend coming up. And so, you know, with this one right here, when you pull out, if we do break down below that level right there, obviously you still have that enormous fair value gap to the left right there. It's kind of hard to miss, which you could use to also react off of and go back up. And so, you know, look at this one is still bullish, right? It's still, you know, in, in a range there, of course, but there's nothing bearish about IWM right now. When you look at this, it's just basically the ranging, but it does have support down below for it if it wants to continue to move higher. And if it stays above that 2023 high, that is a, a very good thing. And then when you go to individual stocks, see Disney had a really good day today, up over 2%, and it's just breaking these levels, right? This is what's happening as it stays up in this channel, continues moving up. And speaking of something I talked about with PayPal, which we'll talk about in a minute, you can see when I talk about the golden cross of that 50 and 200 right there, you know, right there is when it happened for Disney. It doesn't mean it's going straight to the moon or anything, but it is a bullish thing that happens most of the time. And you can see ever since that bullish cross for Disney, it's up a whopping what is that 32 percent right there so nice move up since that and you know when you look at this one as well we kind of pull out a little bit and we look at this one i mean all i'm gonna do is draw some trend lines right here across these levels right here to see if it ended up getting a back test or not and you know understand today one reason it had a very good day today was it got a price upgrade right from barclays they end up increasing this one from 95 to 135 dollars so that is a bullish thing one reason they're probably doing this and one reason it still continues to move up is because actually in april it's one of its best months it's the second best month usually and when you see here's the seasonality right here for april for walt disney and then you look also at the percentage as far as like how often it gains in frequency it's 70 percent for april the only other one is i think bigger than this is november at 75 percent and so again we'll see if season nine plays out on this one but you got big firms giving it upgrades and stuff so no surprise there now talking about paypal again when you're looking at this one you're looking for that golden cross between the 50 and the 200 still has not got it okay as it means gonna go straight to the moon it's gonna sell back down when that happens but overall looking longer term usually that is a bullish thing right now it's just consolidating right there as you can see mitigating that fair value gap to the left right there and so what was supply actually turning into demand at the moment at least that's what it's trying to do to move up in to that rth gap which has been there forever on a bad earnings call and so that really is your main target once it gets above that level right there to the left for sure now when you look at palantir for example some people are going to say it's a head and shoulders could be we'll see if it plays out i'm expecting it to come back up to maybe form out that right shoulder what you expect and if it does break the neckline you know anywhere from 19 to 20 bucks or whatever is what you're really looking for on this one if that happens that means it's got to happen uh, all head and shoulders don't work out when you look at that thing uh, but again if it does uh, end up panning out you, like i said 19 20 bucks somewhere in there is really uh, what you're looking at and stuff so and again you guys moving average averages which could act as support the 50 and the 100 all of them are curled up and stuff uh, heading up to an upper trend so that's a good thing it's still sitting on the other trend line right there which was resistance now turned into support so this does not have to work out i'm just telling you to be aware of it if it does again you got an rth gap there which could also be filled which would be a great thing and then if you pull the fibs on this thing from when this move started you know that's going to put you anywhere from that 50 to the golden pocket area <clears throat> that's going to put you anywhere from that 50 to golden pocket fibonacci area right there if it does play out so we'll see on that one now when it comes to earnings you look around and tell me if you own any of these stocks or you're playing any of these stocks because i mean there's gamestop that's probably the most recognizable but besides that not even it's going to move the market now looking at economic data again a lot of housing data you got your s p's case shield home price month over month 
And, and again, I don't really think that's going to mess with the market too much. I mean, it will housing stocks probably, but uh, then you have CB consumer confidence, the manufacturing data, which continues to get ignored, the services index. Maybe they'll pay attention to that if we get good news. And then the Dallas Fed services index, and then you'll have some smaller uh, note options coming at one o'clock right there. And I'll definitely touch on more tomorrow when it comes to energy uh, and a few other things to watch out for, for sure, because that's really important. And it looks like energy continues to perform very well today. And a lot of those stocks are breaking out. So we'll go in a lot more detail on that for you as you can see it, because I'll tell you one reason for your pocketbook, why you want to know if like XLE and the rest of these are going to start breaking out to a much higher level and stuff. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it definitely will affect your pocketbook and I will show you why. Okay. So please let me know if you got anything out of this, hit that like and subscribe button. Really appreciate it. Let me know how you think this week's going to pan out and stuff. Are we going to be green, red, going to go into April and have a good April? Like what, what you're looking at stuff. And I'll have a lot more data on that tomorrow for you. So anyway, hope you guys had a good one. I'll see you tomorrow.